good evening and thanks for joining us for the Thursday edition of Source 16 News at 10. Topping our news this hour, a second Hopkinsville woman has been arrested in connection to the assault and attempted robbery of a Laurel Cove apartment man last May. Hopkinsville police report the 21-year-old Tierra Harris turned herself in at the Christian County Jail Wednesday morning around 9:10 and was charged with first-degree complicity to assault. According to the warrant, Harris was one of three female assailants that participated in the assault and attempted robbery of 39-year-old Antonio Burris at his Laurel Cove apartment off Fort Campbell Boulevard on May 22, 2010. Police say Harris, along with 21-year-old Shalisha Settles of Hopkinsville, who was arrested and charged Wednesday morning, were let into the Burris' apartment by Settles' younger sister, who was already inside and left the door unlocked. Once inside the Laurel Cove apartment, the two armed women allegedly demanded money from Burris's safe and then a scuffle ensued, which ended with Burris being shot twice and the third female, Settles' younger sister, suffering a laceration to her wrist. During the assault, police say Settles possessed a gun and Harris possessed a box cutter. To date, the third co-conspirator, Settles' younger sister, has not been arrested or charged in connection to the crime. About 150 Rakasans and 101st Combat Aviation Regiment soldiers returned this evening from their deployment in support of Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. In addition, over 200 more soldiers are expected to return tomorrow. Over 900 local troops are expected to return by Wednesday, February 9th in six separate flights. Post officials want to remind families that flights could change. For any last-minute flight changes, check out Fort Campbell's website, campbell.army.mil. Then all you need to do is go to the Families category and click on Welcome Home Ceremonies. One way House lawmakers are looking at saving money in the state budget is by changing how Kentucky inmates are sentenced. In 2007, Kentucky was the number one incarcerator in the United States, and 15th District State Representative Brent Yance of Greenville wants to change that. The systemic problem is we're in a recession, and every loose penny and dime we take in, despite the economy being somewhat better, has to go to the two um, cost drivers for state government, one of which is Medicaid and the other one of which is uh, corrections. We have about 22, 23,000 prisoners incarcerated. We have, of those, we have 7,500 in county jails. We have about another 25 or so thousand people on probation and parole. In the last fiscal year or last 12 months, I'm not sure which it is, we've spent uh, around $513 million dealing with the issue of corrections. And we aren't correcting anything. We're putting people in prison, but when they get out, they typically tend to recidivate or come back. A group of lawmakers, prosecutors, researchers, and others have been meeting since last July and have recommended changes in the state penal code. Many of the people incarcerated are there because of drugs. And so we're looking at a different program that tries to identify those who are the, um, I guess, the traffickers versus those who have a small quantity and are possessors. But basically, overall, trying to, one part of it deals with the issue of um, rehabilitation, drug drug treatment in regional mental health centers, one of which is in Hopkinsville in halfway houses where they also get the treatment as well as potentially do some work, earn a living, support their families. Jan says the final bill is not complete yet, but some of its recommendations include mandatory release supervision and drug penalty changes. A similar corrections overhaul has taken place in Texas and is projected to save the state as much as $2 billion by 2012. A federal court has dismissed a $1 million wrongful death lawsuit filed against the Clarksville Police Department in the September 2009 murder of a soldier's wife. A federal court order from Judge Alita Trawer dismissed a lawsuit filed by Helen Stegan on behalf of 25-year-old Cena Marie Downing, who was found shot to death on September 8, 2009 inside her Autumnwood Boulevard residence. Her husband, Jonathan Downing, a Fort Campbell soldier, was charged with her murder. The complaint of the lawsuit, which was originally filed in state court but was moved to federal court because the U.S. Army was also named as a defendant, claimed the police did not fully investigate the 25-year-old woman's death. A release from Clarksville City Information Director Mark Hicks says City Attorney Lance Baker filed a motion to dismiss the suit and Stegan failed to file a response. Thus, the judge granted the city's motion to dismiss the wrongful death lawsuit. Baker characterized the ruling as a, quote, significant victory for the city 
and noted it is one of three lawsuits against the Clarksville Police Department that have been dismissed within the last year. Upkinsville Christian County Chamber of Commerce President Carter Hendricks gave local Kiwanians a chamber update during their weekly meeting and explained why he is optimistic about 2011. You've seen recently some announcements about expansions. We've seen Margarita, MSSC, Continental Mills, and several others announce expansions. Over the last year, we've added just under 600 jobs to our market in Christian County. We've added just over six, or just under 600 jobs in the last year, according to the EDC's most recent report. That means people are coming back in line. We're seeing our unemployment continue to go down. We're at about 10.4 percent as most recent report. We need to be lower than that, but that's down from 13 percent a year ago. Hendricks went into further detail about why the local economy is improving. Per capita income has improved. City of Hopkinsville continues to report that they're outperforming their budget projections and payroll collection. That's a good sign. Again, that means jobs are back online. And we boast a retail market surplus of over $200 million. Meanwhile, he also announced that the Chamber of Commerce is close to reaching its Christian County Cares 2015 fundraising goal of $750,000. A Greenville man was charged with driving under the influence and drug possession after police say he was involved in a two-vehicle wreck that injured two of his juvenile passengers. Kentucky State Police report the 33-year-old Eric Bryan was arrested Wednesday night around 635 after he rear-ended a vehicle on Kentucky 189 near Greenville that was being driven by 56-year-old Leonard Clark of Broward who had just pulled out of Copper Creek Drive. According to police, Brian's two juvenile passengers, 10-year-old Wesley Bryan and 14-year-old Clayton Shaw, both of Greenville, were transported by ambulance to Muhlenberg Community Hospital for treatment. Meanwhile, state police determined that Brian was under the influence and possessed marijuana and an assorted amount of pills. He was booked in the Muhlenberg County Jail on charges of his second DUI, possession of marijuana and drug paraphernalia, two counts of possession of a controlled substance, possession of a legend drug, and prescription not in a proper container. A Murray State University criminal justice graduate has been promoted to District 1 Assistant Supervisor of the Department of Criminal Justice, Probation, and Parole. Department of Corrections Director of Probation and Parole Tim Carmen today announced John Cooper was promoted to the position and assumed his duties Tuesday. Cooper began his career with the Division of Probation and Parole in January 2002 after earning his degree at MSU. He was assigned to the Paducah office but transferred to Marshall County in December 2002. In 2006, Cooper began writing pre-sentence investigation reports for the 42nd Judicial Court until October 2007 when he transferred to the Caldwell County office. As District 1 assist Assistant Supervisor, Cooper will be covering the following counties, Ballard, Caldwell, Callaway, Carlisle, Fulton, Graves, Hickman, Livingston, Lyon, Marshall, McCracken, and Trigg. Cooper currently lives in Crittenden County with his wife and children. Well, the West Kentucky Workforce Investment Board's Youth Council is working to make kids' dreams come true. The council met this morning to approve their 2011-2012 request for proposal, which helps find contractors who are willing to help 16 to 21-year-olds master the skills needed to get their dream jobs. We have representatives that cover a wide range of our community throughout the 17 counties to make sure that we are doing what the youth really need and the things that they're seeing are like. Even though the board receives funds from the government, they are not sure if they will be able to fund some of their summer programs this year, and the decision will be based on federal allocations. The board covers 17 counties in the West Kentucky region. To learn more about the state of the schools, officials are encouraging area residents to attend a Saturday's Regional Education Summit 2011 at Hopkinsville Community College. This year's theme is Preparing Our Children for the Future. And Murray State University Executive Director Gina Winchester explains why residents should attend the summit, which includes six training sessions. Well, obviously education is the key to success. Um, if you look at the societies who have been successful, it's the ones who have engaged in education at all levels, uh, starting at a very, very early age with your um, early childhood education going through your P through um, or K through 12 system and then on into higher education. Um, 
you just never really stop learning throughout life. And so de depending on what area you're talking about, a topic, whether it's healthcare or economic development, um, the more you can educate yourself in those areas, the better that you're going to be um, able to deal with the issues and the concerns that, that surface on a daily basis. The keynote speaker at the event is Executive Director of the Council of Chief State School Officers, Jean Wilhoyt. The Regional Education Summit 2011 will take place Saturday morning from 8 to noon at Hopkinsville Community College. Seven local magistrates have voted to give themselves a pay raise. Hopkins County Fiscal Court magistrates have approved a 1.5% pay raise that will add about $270 for the fiscal year to each of the seven members' salary, which is roughly $18,000 per year. Hopkins County officials also told Source 16 the pay raise will be effective in the March payroll. Friday's Mega Millions jackpot is $12 million and Saturday's Powerball jackpot is $50 million.